Hey guys, welcome back or welcome if you're new. In today's video, I'm going to be making a bunch of mini collages, vintage inspired um, art or collage art on this receipt roll. So um, if you've never seen this before, basically what it is, it's a continuous strip. Let me untie this, a continuous strip of mini collages that you can tear off of the strip and then use in your journals. So in here you're gonna see like a lot of um, blank spaces in some of these collages and um, I did it that way so that when I tear this off and use it in my junk journal I have somewhere to journal on um, or to write labels for maybe photos so um, you'll see that a lot in here. And I was originally inspired to do this by Barbara from 49 Dragonflies. I saw a video on her channel a little over a year ago and I just fell in love with this idea. I thought it was so neat and um, I've been wanting to do it ever since. And I actually bought this receipt roll, I think like about a year ago um, after I saw that video. Um, and I just started doing the collages a couple weeks ago. So it's taken me that long um, to start doing this. And what I can tell you is that it's so relaxing. It's just peaceful. Sometimes I don't feel like making a whole um, journal spread in my junk journal. So this is really fun. And there's not really a whole lot of thought that goes into um, these little mini collages. It's There's really no rules to it. A couple of recommendations that I have for making these receipt rolls is that you don't want to use anything too thick, like a thick cardstock in here, because when you roll it, um, it's going to have some trouble bending. So for instance, something like this, like a clothing tag, would have trouble bending it, it would get stuck because what you want to do is be able to um, roll this up with some sort of string or tie through the middle and then kind of loosely be able to pull it out like this and you also don't want to have anything kind of sticking off too much off the side so that you can keep it rolled up nicely and then pull it out. You don't, I mean, you don't have to do it that way, but yeah, so pretty much that's what it is. And you can see like the little gaps in between here, um, where a new collage starts. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm probably going to make like maybe, um, two or three of these little mini collages. So let's go ahead and get started. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to be doing a voiceover because the neighbor's dog started barking and he was pretty vocal throughout the whole um, time I was doing this and it was showing up on the audio. So I just decided to um, delete the audio and kind of explain my process through a voiceover and also speed up the video a little bit because it was over 40 minutes long. So what I'm explaining right here is that if you don't have a receipt roll, you can also use um, some receipts and tape or glue them together into a long strip. You can add on to them. If you have a couple of CVS receipts, those are perfect because they are like a mile long. So you could use those. Um, you could also use craft paper and cut up a paper bag or strips of paper like I'm showing right here in this book. Um, some craft paper if you like that like brown um, vintage looking background but again I will be sure to link this receipt roll in the description box it's in my Amazon storefront along with other crafting and journaling supplies that I like to purchase from Amazon so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started and I like to put something underneath the receipt roll for when I'm inking so I don't get it on my desk mat even though it's kind of um, looking a little rough these days. So getting started, I like to use one big piece and then kind of layer on top of that. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm using one of these mini planner pages and I ripped off an edge to make it fit. And then I'm just using my Tombow tape runner to glue it down. 
And I usually like to think in themes whenever I'm doing journal spreads, planner spreads, anything like that. Even though not a lot of thought needs to go into making these mini collages, I still tend to think in themes. So um, that's what I'm doing here for this little mini collage is I'm making kind of a moon theme. And this little deco paper and sticker kit is from Amazon and I had purchased it a while back because um, I actually want to make Zodiac themed junk journals. So I thought I would use this as like um, embellishments for pages and decoration. So I think this is the first time I actually use this kit is in this video. And sometimes I like to um, kind of play around with the placement of things before I stick them down to the page. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just going through that little kit and finding different pieces um, that will fit well on my collage where I still leave myself room to use that weekly plan um, paper as a, a place to journal. And I might not necessarily use it as and write my weekly plan in my junk journal. I usually don't do that. Um, I save that for my planner, but I can still kind of jot things down on it or end up covering it up later, the weekly plan title, and then use it as something else. So now that I've picked out all of my pieces that I want for this collage and kind of played around with the placement, I'm just sticking them down to the receipt roll, um, either with a sticker or with my tape runner. And again, I don't always do it this way. I don't always plan out where everything's going to go before I put it down. Sometimes I just wing it and throw things down. And I'm really trying to get out of the habit actually of planning where I'm going to put things in my collages. Um, I'm trying to just focus on not letting it be perfect or not trying to make it perfect and just going for the perfectly imperfect look, <laughs> if that makes sense. And I actually have found that when I don't plan too much and I don't think about it too much, those are the collages and the journal spreads that actually look the best because it's just free thinking. It's free um, letting your mind relax and kind of just go with the flow instead of trying to control things. Um, I know I kind of went deep there, <laughs> but that's just kind of what I am trying to practice. And even though I, again, there still is a little bit of planning that's going on in this, in these collages, it's not too much. It's not, it's not over overwhelming me. I'm still very relaxed. And um, again, my mind just always goes back to themes. It's just, that's how I think. Um, but right here I'm using, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm using Distress Oxide um, in the color Vintage Photo. This is one of my favorites. And then I'm just using like this little um, dauber or smudger to go around and ink up the edges and kind of make it look vintage or old. I don't like stark white in my journal spreads a lot. I, It's not that I don't like it. I just like the look of vintage um, or worn or aged paper. And that's why I think a brown paper bag or craft paper would also look really good for these receipt rolls because um, the background's already brown. But right here, I'm just kind of going through this little tag box that I have. And then I realize that these are too thick to use um, on this receipt roll again because it's not going to bend very well. So I end up not using those. And the reason why I didn't even attempt to use one of those cardstock tags in this video is because I had previously tried it um, with a journaling cardstock paper in this receipt roll. And again, when I went to roll it up, it, it's kind of, it wants to peel away and doesn't want to roll with the curve of the receipt roll. So that's why I didn't even attempt it. And I didn't attempt it with those um, die cuts that I just had. But I'm going to go ahead and get started on the second little collage. And I have a bunch of these um, vintage themed stamp stickers from a Your Creative Studio box. Everything in that little clear acrylic case or container is from Your Creative Studio. I've done many unboxing videos on my channel. It is a vintage themed subscription box full of stationery supplies for journaling, um, for planning, for little collages like this. 
And I would say a good portion of my vintage theme stationery supplies and stickers, maybe like 35, 40% is from those subscription boxes because I've been collecting them for like a year and a half now. Um, so I've been getting a box every month and I'm actually getting ready to do February's unboxing video very soon. I always do the previous month's video because it is like a mystery box. You don't know what you're going to get every month. There is a theme, which you guys know I love themes if you haven't heard me talk about it a million times, but there's always a theme in the mystery boxes and Amanda does a great job at curating and putting together those themes, which are never holiday themed, which is very unique um, for any sort of stationary um, subscription box. So right here, I'm just going through some of those papers from the YCS boxes. I have some scrapbooking and deco paper. This is actually packaging that comes in the boxes that I always save and I like to use them in my junk journals. But from this case, I pick out a vellum map and then the scrapbooking paper that has a vintage print of a typewriter on it. And I love vintage typewriters. Still to this day, my favorite purchase from the swap meet or flea market has been a vintage Underwood typewriter that I had purchased to use as a prop when I did an Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe theme or the Raven theme for Halloween a few years ago. And my husband was like, why, why are you buying this? <laughs> like he didn't understand. And I was like, it's a prop. Like, it's just going to be a prop. Um, I just thought it was so cool. That thing was like 60 pounds and I hauled it like a half mile <laughs> to the car. And still to this day, it's been a few years, but that typewriter is still sitting in my living room and it's staying there because I just love it. I love vintage things. I love vintage telephones, um, lace, vintage doilies, just anything that gives that old, old world aesthetic. But but getting started with the second collage, I just picked out the sun sticker because the previous collage I did a moon. So I was like, oh, I'll just use a sun in this one. Even though this little collage isn't sun themed, I just use it as a starting point. And then again, I have another piece of deco paper that I just roughly teared off one edge. I like one straight edge and then a kind of rough cut edge. I really like that torn paper look and then I'm just doing that again and inking up the sides of this scrapbook paper with the typewriter and kind of just building off of that. So pretty much just stacking and layering while also trying to leave myself some space to journal. I think I end up covering up more than I wanted to on um, that deco paper and I think I end up going back and adding more to it. Sometimes I get a little carried away and I don't know when to stop and that's okay too. Again, when you don't think about it too much, that's when your collage ends up looking really cool and having a lot of interest um, is when you don't plan things. At least that's my opinion. And then when I go to tear this off and use it in my junk journal, whenever that may be, it's going to add another layer to my junk journal page or um, journal spread. And then so it's going to add more um, depth and texture. And with all of the different layers going on, it's just going to look really cool. And I could even do a whole journal spread by just tearing out these mini collages and make a collage with the collages in my junk journal, if that makes sense. So that would look really cool as well. It would be kind of bulky, but I could just stack the layers or kind of put them side by side, maybe turn them on a page. And I think I want to do that actually, now that I think about it, I think I want to do that and maybe film it for you guys and show you um, or show you how you can use these little mini collages in a junk journal spread. So maybe I'll do that in a video for you guys as well. But right here, I'm going through my botanist sticker book that I purchased off of Amazon. And this is one of my favorite purchases from Amazon, along with its cousin, the Antiquarian sticker book. The Antiquarian was the first one I got. And then I saw this botanist sticker book on another YouTuber's um Amazon recommendations or Amazon Prime Day and she had this one and I I knew I had to get it because it's just beautiful a lot of beautiful botanical stickers flowers mushrooms in here and 
Um, they all do have a white border or most of them have a white border around them, but I just go and ink the edges of those to make it again look aged or worn or antiqued. And right here is where I realized that I had covered up my writing or my journaling space with that flower sticker. Um, but I just ink it up and end up going and looking through all of my deco stickers to try to find a label or a blank um, sticker with writing space on it. And I'm not going, I'm probably not going to use this sticker label for a whole journal entry because it's very small. But what I would probably use this collage for is to add a title or a label or a date. I'd use a date stamp on this part, um, maybe with a picture in my junk journal because I do like to use my junk journal for memory keeping of photos of my, my kids and my husband. So maybe I would write the date or the title of the picture um, right there on that label. So even though I don't have a lot of writing space, I can still write something on it. And to finish everything off for this collage, I just inked up the edges. And for collage number three, I just took that matte vellum paper and tore off a piece and kind of layered on top of that. I do like to have different textures of papers and fabrics um, in collages. Again, I just can't use anything too thick on this receipt roll or it won't um, roll very well. Um, but the vellum paper did work out fine. And I actually used a piece of fabric in another collage on this receipt roll, not in this video, but I did use a small piece of um, cloth or like muslin cloth and um, it worked out fine. I just used some, my tape runner actually for that and then I um, kind of put stickers on top of it. I wouldn't recommend stapling any fabric or anything in this on the receipt roll, otherwise the back of it might tear the rest of the receipt roll when you roll it out, if that makes sense. So um, I do use fabrics on this as well. I just didn't end this video, but I'm just going through here and trying to find different tickets from this little vintage sticker box from your creative studio. And I'm pretty sure everything in this collage is going to be from your creative studio. And I have a bunch of these little booklets full of like mini deco paper. Some of them are vellum like that one. And then, um, some of them are mixed. And so I'm just kind of thumbing through and trying to find um, something that would stand out. And here I chose purple, that purple image, and then the purple ticket. I thought those two things went together really well. Um, so that's why I chose those. And with this collage, I didn't really have a starting point like I did with the first two collages because it did take me some time um, to kind of find a starting point for this one. So sometimes a theme or a prompt won't come to me like at the beginning, it'll kind of come in the process or in the middle of it, kind of like how you see here with the purple. Um, so I'm just taping this little piece of deco paper down with the lady in the purple flower and I didn't want to cover up her face. Um, so I just went ahead and taped down another piece of that map vellum paper and then after I taped it down, I just kind of tore tore away a little piece to expose um, her face in that purple flower. And then the map paper, um, the pop of pink, I think really um, made it stand out as well. The, the brown colors in the background and then the pops of color in the front, I really liked. And then um, up there in the right hand corner, I'm taking this stamp. I think it's a fairy. Um, and I just used that same Distress Oxide ink to um, stamp it instead of getting out like my other um, stamp pad. So um, next I just kind of ink up around the edges and then I end up going into my Tim Holtz Big Chat Words sticker book and sometimes I'll make phrases. I'll try to um, even write a sentence with these words, mixing both handwriting and then a sticker. Um, and then sometimes I just find a word and then stick it down there. It doesn't really need to make sense. So I just chose journey. I didn't take too much time trying to pick out a word. I just chose a word and put it on there. And that's pretty much it for this video. I do add a little bit more of that map paper up there at the top. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed 
this video. I hope it inspired you to maybe create some mini collages or to maybe do a receipt roll like this. And if you have a bunch of paper scraps laying around, this is an excellent way to um, use them up. And I think I forgot to mention that, but also any little bits and pieces of ephemera that you have or that you collect, this is a great way to um, use them as making these little mini collages. But again, if you guys like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. It does help my channel out tremendously. And if you aren't currently subscribed to my channel, I hope you consider subscribing and becoming part of my family here on YouTube. And until my next video, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching and stay crafty. Mm -hmm.